blood still six under the bleaks on his head he made a startling come yeah, he'd still be passing What's up squad, it's your squid, aka the anxious squid, you already know what the video is about, let's just get straight into it. Mickey Lauda's career will go down in history as not just one of the most remarkable in Formula 1, but in all of sports. Alright. His is a tale of triumph and disaster, resilience and dedication, courage and determination. As always, if you want to watch like that video, will never be seen again. without me reacting a to it, script story that was eventually the link's at the bottom of the description. On Hollywood Celluloid. Sorry for speaking over him. Courage and determination, the like of which will never be seen again. Well, all right, that's a big rap. Story that was eventually immortalized on Hollywood celluloid. Oh, there's a movie about him. All right. Born into a prominent banking dynasty in 1949, they but the young Austrian had no desire to follow in the family business, and against his grandfather's wishes, he parlayed family wealth and a life insurance policy into a bank loan that he would use to finance his racing dreams. Nice, good on him. It was a bold and desperate ploy, which in later years he admitted should never have worked, <laughs> but it got him all the way. To Formula One. Gave him his and crack. After struggling with indifferent cars in 1972, he used his apparent sponsorship to bluff his way into the fading BRM team for 1973. Nice. His striking speed. Look at the difference the in the wheels. The great Enzo Ferrari. Lauda promptly bought his way out of his BRM drive and moved to Maranello, beginning one of the most successful relationships in Formula One. Well, all right. Ferrari, who hadn't had a champion since John Surtees in 1964, was impressed by the skinny Austrian's self-confidence and no-nonsense work ethic, and his calculating approach and brutal honesty earned him the nickname, The Computer. Nice. A pair of victories in Spain and the Netherlands arrived in 1974, like before Lauda and Ferrari hit the jackpot in 1975 with world championship success. Good on him. The following year, he looked certain to repeat the success, having taken five victories by mid-summer. Nice. But then came the defining moment of his career. Oh, On shit, he's going to crash, the German Grand Prix at the desperately dangerous Nürburgring. Shit, a race he's going to crash. Lauda argued shouldn't have gone ahead. The Austrian's Ferrari inexplicably crashed and burst into flames. Fuck. Four brave drivers and a marshal plunged into the towering inferno and hauled Lauda out. Jesus, he's but melted. At that stage, he'd suffered first-degree burns on his head and wrists. Fuck, several he's broken like bones. Proper melted, lungs like... scorched from inhaling toxic fumes. Jesus. The situation was so dire that as Lauda lay in hospital, he was administered the last rites by a priest. But still, Shit, yeah, Austria, fair enough. with sheer bloody-minded determination, fought on. It defied all rational logic Shit. when, less than six weeks later, and with blood still seeping six from under the bandages on his head, he made a startling comeback. Yeah, he'd still be passing and shit. What the fuck? Rational logic when, less than six weeks later, and with blood still seeping from under the bandages on his head, he's still he made healing. A startling comeback. You've not Italian finished Grand cooking Prix, yet, bro. Finishing fourth and somehow like keeping his shit you know how a steak keeps cooking on your plate after you've seen. fucking taken it off the hot plate for a while like it's the same logic like you're still heating your like i mean you're not six weeks later i'm like that's hyperbole but you know what i mean like from under the bandages shit. on his head he made a startling comeback at the italian grand prix far out fourth, and somehow he keeping his fourth. world championship hopes alive the 1976 championship ended in a showdown between Lauda and McLaren's James Hunt, his friend and great rival. In torrential oh, conditions... Yeah, six in weeks! That's... The 1976 championship ended in a showdown between Lauda and McLaren's James Hunt, his friend and great rival. In torrential conditions at Japan's Fuji circuit, Lauda decided it was too dangerous to race and pulled yeah. into the pits, handing the title to Hunt, who declared his rival's withdrawal an act of bravery. Absolutely. Any suggestion that Lauda's power had diminished, however, would be quickly dispelled the following season when he clinched the title with two races to go. Good on him. Well done, mate. Leaving Ferrari. Good comeback. The following year, he won twice for Bernie Eccleston's Brabham team, including, famously, nice. the BT46 fan car. But after a disappointing start to the 1979 campaign, the no-nonsense Austrian walked away from the sport and straight into retirement midway through the Canadian Grand Prix weekend, claiming nice. he was tired of driving around in circles. Fair enough, mate. Using Silly his business boots. acumen, Lauda used his time away from Formula One to start his own airline. 
but three years later, he'd be okay. back on the grid after signing what was thought to be the most lucrative contract in history with McLaren. The comeback would yield a deserved third world title. Good on McLeod him. beating rapid young teammate Alain Prost to the 1984 title well by done. the look at him. margins. And just half Good a dude. Point. He was the toughest guy to beat, as far as I know. The toughest guy, so therefore, this championship is the most important one for me. Nice. The final victory followed in 1985, before he hung up his helmet for good. Though in truth, Lauda never really left the paddock. In That's the years weird. that followed, he worked as an advisor for Ferrari, then as team principal Just for Jaguar, and break the sport. as well as a TV commentator. But he found his greatest success out of the cockpit as non-executive chairman of Mercedes. Did he get like plastic surgery or something, or just just Kim did just be an old like sort of make it look all right? Like, cause he and I'm not trying to be that guy. Like, I'm not like having a crack at him about his disfigurement or anything like that. Like, it's I'm not making a, a judgment or or anything like that. Like, I'm just talking about it, you know, but like it, it was, it looked far more prominent on him as a younger person, if that makes sense, like it was more jarring, like you could see the top half of his face was like melted, I think I said before, but um, but as a, as an older bloke, he just, he just looks wrinkly, he just looks old, you know what I mean, like he sort of grew into that, didn't he? TV commentator, but he found his greatest success out of the cockpit as non-executive chairman of Mercedes, where, with team principal Toto Wolff, kindred spirit Lewis Hamilton and... Right, so he he's sort of responsible for the Hamilton domination. Team, ...adding yet more world titles to his impressive CV. Good on him. A much missed presence from the paddock this season following lung surgery, Lauda's return to Formula One had been eagerly anticipated. The news that yep. he now won't return is desperately oh, sad. That's rough. Although, like the scars he bore with such pride, humility, and dignity, the marks he left in the record books and in the annals mm. of motorsport history will never fade. Seems like a good dude, you know what I mean? And it's like the the whole concept, like he mentioned there at the end, like he wore it with pride, you know what I mean? Like, and it's it's a you know, I wanted to say that as well because I just before, like, I'm not having a crack at his at his disfigurement and stuff. He obviously, like. He didn't give a fuck, you know what I mean? He was like, yep, this was, it, it happened on the job. It's, you know, one of the things that happens on the job. This is the job I'm in, you know what I mean? And, like, it, it probably added to his mystique a little bit, but what's the story? Why is he not coming back? Is he just enjoying his retirement? Like, did he did he pass away or something? Like, what's the, what's the story? He obviously had lung, like they said, lung surgery, because obviously there's something, like, you know, if he's inhaled all that fire back in the day, there might be something on the inside of it um, that needed replacing and all that sort of stuff or, or fixing and whatnot. But yeah, wow, that was cool. Thank you for the suggestion, whoever it was. Um, I think it was a while ago. If you want guaranteed reactions, $5. I like money. Turning some of your money into mine on a monthly basis would be ideal. And yeah, you get a guaranteed reaction every month for as little as 5 bucks. Some people do it for 50 I am saying 5 So yeah, do me a solid. Give me your money. Uh, failing that, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, trying to get to 10,000 likes, not likes, I've got 10,000 likes, trying to get to 10,000 subscribers uh, by the end of this year, which is 2021, if you're watching in the future, can't do it without you, without people like you, if you're not subscribed, so yeah, do me a solid, hit the subscribe, I'm going to film some more, edit some more, react to some more, and uh, hopefully you're going to watch some more, I'll see you when I look at you, you'll see me when you look at me, thanks so much for watching.